did you ever hear the tragedy of Black Widow games? It's not a story Valve would tell you. Hey everyone, EDC back again, and happy Halloween, my favorite holiday of all time. Despite me having a really slow upload schedule for this channel, every October I always try to post something for the occasion. This year I've been trying to pull out the big guns, especially for this month. I can't sleep. Some people this time of year might be actually going outside, going to parties, or doing something meaningful with their life. Except for me. Instead, I'm gonna be staying inside to play some old Half-Life mods from the 90s. I really don't have anything better to do, don't I? So turn off the lights, get into the horror spirit, and sit tight for this amazing classic. I used to be a bit hesitant about reviewing mods. Not that there's anything wrong with them. I just kinda like to talk about the actual games behind those mods first. I have warmed up to the idea, Kinda, with videos like Jabroni Brawl and I guess this one now. But this was a mod that I knew I had to talk about since the beginning of this channel. I just wouldn't be able to live with myself if I never got around to it. The story starts with Black Widow Games, a modding development team that did contract work for several different companies and products. They were mostly based in Canada, but there were some exceptions from around the world. Neil Makey was one of the main figures of this team, being the game and level designer. Black Widow Games did a lot of stuff in the Quake 1 and Quake 2 modding scene. But with the Half-Life engine being open to modders, it provided a platform for for a number of creative game designers without prior knowledge or experience in creating AAA titles. These people can make their own unique or weird gaming experiences easily at home. Sure, this might not sound that interesting nowadays since it's really common now, but at the time it was so much different. Some of these models would actually be recognized by Valve and receive actual funding. But with an easy to use engine, Black Widow Games were able to get themselves on the map with the next big Half-Life mod in August 1999 called USS Dark Star. Okay, okay, just just bear with me. I, I, I'm going somewhere with this. I know I already covered this mod in an old video, but... Alright, come on, let's be real here, guys. That video sucks. So I'm redoing it. I'm playing on M mod for this video just so I can make it a little bit more interesting. I was really young at the time. Like, probably in kindergarten young. I wasn't around when this mod came out, though I loved Half-Life and this was the first ever mod that I played. It would be the beginning of my start within the Half-Life community and its modding scene for many years to come. This was completely mind-blowing. Seeing this cutscene and being on a spaceship was a new concept for me. Good morning, Mr. Freeman. Looks like you're running late. He still play as Gordon Freeman for, um, for some reason, I don't know why. A little game glitch that I taught myself throughout the years is that you can actually take this security guard with you. Trust me, he'll be important. Damn that monkey. Gordon, have you been able to get Gravy Trader running? You bet. I waited 40 years for Gravy Trader, and I'm not leaving until I get it running. Man, Half-Life fans think they have it bad? How do you wait on a game for over 40 years with PC big boxes still being around in the future? Oh well, good luck with that, I guess. That security guard from earlier can be set up in this sequence to die, and you can grab his gun that way. I kill the guards to get extra ammo and the scientists because it's pretty funny. Gordon, I'm very concerned about these electrical force field barriers. What will happen if we have a power outage? Man, shut the fuck up! Then, like in Half-Life, a test goes wrong or something, and your new goal is to try and escape. There are a lot of cool set pieces and ideas that the modders had. For 1999, this was pretty impressive stuff. Okay, I take all that back. What the hell just happened? So impressive that USS Dark Star was at the first ever Half-Life Mod Expo in 1999. It was showcased to people alongside other mods like Gunman Chronicles and something called Counter-Strike. Regardless of that, these mods were chosen by Valve to flex some of that modding muscle. I just can't imagine how Black Widow Games must have felt. With Gabe Newell even being there to give an opening speech and to show off Team Fortress 2 Brotherhood of Arms. This is when mods had the possibility of being considered retail products. Gunman Chronicles and Counter-Strike got this treatment, getting funding and being sold in stores. But one of them was obviously more successful than the other. I also mentioned this in my Gunman Chronicles video if you want to check that out. Back to USS Dark Star. You only fight Zen creatures, so you won't encounter Hecto Marine sent in to cover up everything. That would be pretty dumb for an already silly mod. 
Although the mod doesn't provide any new content for Half-Life 1, the level design is quite decent and varied. This scientist getting pulled into a vent by a zombie, these zombies ambushing you in the dark, or getting shrunk down where it feels like one of those old Gmod maps. I'm not gonna act like any of this stuff is groundbreaking, but it will keep you guessing. For a mod that mostly reuses Half-Life 1's assets, this isn't that bad. Oh yes, and how can I forget about the best voice acting in history? I must remain here. 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 Wait a second. Dude, you are still trying to get this game running? What the hell even is Gravy Trader? I'm sorry, I have to put him out of his misery. Damn, that is dedication. I waited 40 years for Gravy Trader, and I'm not leaving until I get it running. Spoiler alert for a mod that came out over two decades ago, you go down this elevator that leads you to the escape pods. One cool detail is that you see the same elevator earlier in the game. I don't know why the scientist waves at you though. I never understood that as a kid, I thought he was like my friend or something. Then you leave the space station, and the mod then decides to do a sequel bait. A sequel that will never come out and one that nobody wants. So that is USS Dankstar. If you're just craving for more of that Half-Life 1 action, then I recommend it. It's about 50 minutes long and it's a good time kill for people who like FPS games. 7 to 10 hours? Yeah, I'm gonna have to call bullshit on that one, guys. One thing about USS Darkstar is the horror aspect of the mod. It's not scary in my opinion, but this was an interesting groundwork for something else. Maybe Black Widow Games could make a horror-oriented inspired mod. This next mod would be the Undisputed Masterpiece, where you could say they hungered for more. You're listening to BMRF Radio. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news report. Unknown atmospheric phenomena have been reported throughout the area. Meteorologists have been unable to identify the source of the strange electrical displays, but we will keep you informed of any developments. We're returning out our regular programming. Oh, BMRF Radio, I get it! As always for these games, I'm playing on hard, and for Day Hunger, that will kick your ass. Now, I grew up with the wand version of Day Hunger right here. However, I'll be using the Steam Mod version of the game to get that good resolution in FOV. But damn, do I always miss these wand menus. Day Hunger came out the same year as USS Darkstar in the year of 1999. There's a, just a small little problem. I have no idea when this mod came out. Most of the dates I found were July 2nd, 1999, but that wouldn't mean USS Darkstar came out after, did it or did it not. In all honesty, I don't know. Wikipedia sure as hell isn't right and the fandoms don't back up their sources. So either way, they hunger most likely came out afterwards. I can't explain how big this mod was and still kinda is. There are still mods being made for a... mod. Many remakes have been attempted and all of them have failed. There are still videos being made here and there talking about it. There was a demo disc from PC Gamer Magazine with a collection of game demos on it, and Day Hunger was just slapped in it for no fucking reason. Hell, it doesn't end there. This mod got a short film. Okay, it wasn't an official short film by the developers. It was a student project by the looks of it. I get that it's a student project, but the acting is a little bit cheesy and really goddamn funny. But they're changed. They're different. They hunger. Hey, that's the name of the show. What? I 
actually, I take that all back. This is just like the mod. But the fact that a bunch of students got together and probably dragged their friends into being in it for some random Half-Life mod is just amazing to me. It's faithful to the source material, and you can tell that they love the mod. An umbrella? But onto the game itself. Today Hunger has this really cool intro from the mod, setting up the mood and atmosphere. Wait, that's not supposed to happen! The backstory isn't in the mod, but in the description for it. It's a simple premise. You're a successful novel writer who is going through writer's block for your next piece. To get inspiration, your producer rents a house in a town called Rockwell in the countryside for you to stay in. While you are driving, you hear BMR off radio giving their newscast about strange activity and think to yourself, Eh, probably nothing. Then in the storm, tragedy strikes. Even after all these years, this intro ages like fine wine. It's not perfect by any means, sort of the graphics are a bit old, but its presentation and setup get you immersed. The dimly lit tunnels, the eerie surroundings, the lack of life, the ringing bell in the distance, and the sounds of wild animals. The religious imagery and the course we find on the ground, this is all great stuff. It's like the original Half-Life, you just know right off the bat that something just isn't right. We come across another church with no living being in sight and hear another news report from BMRF Radio. Several reports of strange happenings in the local countryside have been received here at the radio station. Sheriff Chester Rockwood insists that such reports are just hearsay and rumors, likely spread out by his rivals in an attempt to undermine his positions in the upcoming elections. Rumors are not, some of these reports are very disturbing, and until they can be dismissed, we are advising people to be cautious and stay indoors. No! 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 Get it off me! Get it off! Get it off! We grab a reskin crowbar that takes the form of an umbrella, and the game is now a zombie survival horror. Kill this head crab, grab the pistol, ring the bell, and quickly run down to get the dynamite. Yeah, so the pistol isn't a Glock. They just took pictures of a Beretta 92 and slapped it on the textures. I used to always keep the silencer on since it's more accurate, but taking it off actually makes it shoot faster, which I found handy for this hard playthrough. Also, head crabs are in this since it is still a mod, but it's supposed to be a human head with spider legs. Kind of like that one scene from The Thing. <laughs> We see the zombies rising from the dead, wanting to consume human flesh and kill Jesus. All of this was completely crazy back in the day. Sorb zombies aren't really a new concept, this was before they were done to death and overused in media. So much love and care was put into this mod, I've been playing it for almost two decades and I'm just now finding out that you can break these lights. Seeing these zombies in the dark in this lonely setting along with their noise in the distance was just horrifying to me back in the day. So after we do this puzzle that is actually kind of easy to avoid, we... Wait, where the hell do I go? Okay, well this elevator isn't coming down. Is it this elevator? No, but I did find this room. Guess that's kind of cool. So where do I go? This is where... Although I praise Day Hunger a lot, I have to admit that the level design in some areas just isn't that good. Now I've played it more times than I can count, but I see new people trip up on some of these sections and I can't say I blame them. This mod is really cheesy, from the zombie voice acting being hilarious and them writing We Hunger on the walls. I love this. It's why the mod is so great. I can't think of another mod out there with this distinct and unique style to it. Maybe Black Mesa comes to mind? Turning off this switch and going back allows you to get the sniper rifle and it is ideal for headshots. Yes, they reused the sniper model from Team Fortress Classic. It's a mod, you just have to expect that kind of thing. We finally meet our first normal person in this game. Oof. Oh. Thank god you're normal. Do you know what those things outside are? Yeah, they're called zombies, Wait, dumbass. I think I hear a vehicle coming. Wait, what? Thank god, we're being rescued. Um. Holy crap, dude, why didn't you move out of the way? There's a shotgun here, and what can I say? It's the half one shotgun. It does what I expect. <laughs> 
I want to emphasize how much I love the zombie variety in this mod. I mean, sure they are just half like one zombies and are very bullet spongy and hard, so not really revolutionary. There is this zombie, a headless zombie that was driving this car. Oh wait, that's why he crashed the car, because he didn't know where he was going. Cop zombies and mommy zombies. Come to mommy. I didn't post anything weird on Twitter about this. Wait, wait, no, 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 don't show that tweet! I remember this police car radio used to scare me as a kid. Let's see how it would hold up. Guys, you were supposed to bring me some burgers two hours ago. Guys? It wasn't just the fact that these cops probably died, I was horrified that she never got our burgers. Speaking of cops... That is right, to have more enemy variety, zombies can use guns now while other cop zombies don't use weapons. What? We get a revolver and make an effort to travel to the city in order to contact law enforcement, even though most of them seem to be dead or turned into zombies. Except for this guy, he's normal! Okay, bye! So bear with me for a second. Not only can zombies use guns now, they can also operate helicopters and mount the fucking machine guns on them! I love this mod. Oh man, you sound really scared. We grab a machine gun that's supposed to be a heckler and coach G3 of some kind, even though this mod is supposed to take place or is inspired by the 1950s and looks nothing like one. It still fires grenades even though there isn't a grenade launcher on it. Wait a second, this thing's a fucking browning? Honestly, this mod threw out logic a long time ago because Devil's Rift, the path we decide to go down, leads us to a volcano. This is my least favorite section in the episode. Being in a volcano is surprisingly boring and not that fun. I have no idea why my character decided to climb down a convenient volcano in the middle of Rockwell in the first place or who else decided to come down here. Wait, there are other people who had the same idea? Why are there dead bodies and zombies everywhere? What made you guys think this would be safe? Holy crap, there are zombies everywhere. I gotta find some place to hide. Oh hey, a volcano, this could work. There are a couple of Ifier swords and... Oh hey, a cool scripted train sequence. I'm not even gonna ask why these trains were on the same track, that was pretty cool. This part of the game is kind of like they hungers on a rail. Some might like that, others may not. It's not as long or confusing as on a rail though. Plus, driving over these zombies is extremely satisfying. I know this mod too well. I know where the enemies are, I know that this guy doesn't fade away like the other enemies for some reason, and this zombie just spawns in out of nowhere. But hey, some of these moments make me feel straight up badass. another point in the game where you might be saying where the hell do I go? The train tracks are blocked again and you have to unlock it. What you really do is swim underwater and go to this window while you wait for this scripted sequence. But I'm too busy drowning and getting gang raped by Ithia swords to notice what's happening.
At the end of our train ride, we meet even more zombie cops. Although the zombie cops are just reskin Barneys, they are really annoying in this, and I never figured out why. I used to think it was because they throw too many at you, but it's most likely due to not having any armor. It makes the game harder than how it actually should be, which, for a mod that was going for horror, I guess makes sense. I could have sworn this window breaks or something. Uh, guess not. Aha! I knew it! We make our way into town. We see a horde of zombies have taken over. At this rate, trying to find help seems like a lost cause. Yet, our hero still continues on. If you're fast enough, you can actually save some of these people. I'm a good person. This guy kind of looks like Gene Takovic. Tragically, the BMR of radio station is out of commission. The radio host is deceased. Wait a minute, this guy had a skull in his drawers? Okay, I think this guy might have been a serial killer. Also, I didn't know people read up on PC Gamer in the 1950s. We tried to contact the police through the radio station with a... Very questionable conversation. This is our third police frequency. Who is on the line, over? Hey, yo, pick up the phone! It's an emergency! Emergency? What kind of emergency, over? Dude, there are zombies everywhere! Okay, just calm down and we'll send someone to investigate, over. Well, how long is that gonna take? No, I don't know how much time it will take. We're very busy here. It'll take a while, over. Bruh! Hey, I already told you we will investigate. Now stop insisting. If you believe you're in danger, go to the nearest police station and wait for us there. Over and out. This guy has literally been living under a rock. How the fuck do you not notice any of this? Hey, Carl, there's something going on outside. I'm hearing a lot of noises. Uh, it's probably just the way. Seriously, I, like, I'm hearing people scream out there. There's nothing off about that. Probably just a crazy homeless guy screaming about the end of the world. Or how that raccoon ate his dollar again. It happens every night. Yeah. Uh, I guess you are. Uh, what the fuck is that? Holy shit! Oh god! Get it off me! Oh, let ah! me get my gun! Get ah! you got me, you idiot! Oh shit, Tosh! Oh, uh, it's on me now! Yeah! Yeah! These levels aren't too bad. There's a secret here where you can shoot the cross and it turns into an upside down cross. Which is already a neat detail on its own, but this unlocks a secret room where you can get some supplies and save these guys from a head crab. I'm a good person. You look terrible. Hey yo, fuck you! There's also this car here and as a kid I remember it being the coolest thing ever. Here's a 1999 gaming cinematic moment. Before first time playthrough, it's probably gonna go something like this. Oh hey, this looks like the police place. Yep, this is the place! Come on guys, let me in! There's also this secret where you can get some extra ammo under the flooring. I don't even know why they bothered, we're about to beat this episode. We kill a couple of zombies and make our way inside the police station. Nothing abnormal here. Why the hell is it so dark? He's just committed suicide, boy. Right. Why do we Holy shit, you look ugly. So the zombies lock us up in a prison cell with a big box copy of Day Hunger in it. Which didn't actually exist, mind you, but... Man, that would have been really cool if it did. Oh shit, wait, I'm playing Day Hunger! Good luck, boys. Now have y'all sales a little Ray Ward. 
Then we are introduced to our main antagonist of the hunger, Sheriff Chester Rockwood. The sheriff who is basically in on the whole zombie apocalypse and is in charge of the undead. He was up on a re-election campaign until it's supposedly going missing at the city morgue. Some neat little seeds planted for episode 2. That was the first episode of Day Hunger. Now on to episode two. Oh wait, hang on. Um, yeah, this video is taking longer than usual. I have more in my mind than I thought. At this rate, I don't think I'll be able to meet my October deadline. Hmm. What do I do? Man, imagine if I did other parts of this mod. Wouldn't that be inconvenient? Yep, I'm doing three separate videos in each episode. Part 2 will be done whenever I feel like it, I guess, so stay tuned for that and make sure to subscribe. Until then, have a good day, and happy Halloween!